Welcome back everybody, I'm Tassie and this is my ghostly update vlog. So I want to start off by saying happy Thanksgiving everybody. <laughs> so you guys know my other channel, I do mukbang, which is like eating, cooking, and reviews, right? Uh, I totally forgot that Thanksgiving was this week, so I didn't even talk about it. It wasn't until like the very end of the video, I finally said, I was like eating and stuffing my face. I was like, by the way, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> So, yes, happy Thanksgiving, you guys. I am sorry I missed last week. However, I have amazing news to share with you guys. So, as you guys... Okay, I think I mostly said this on my other channel. Not so much my shaman one. So, on my other channel, I have slowed down a lot on filming. I used to push out four to five videos a week, you guys. Now, I do about one video a week on both channels. And you guys know sometimes I miss a week. So... At work, you know, I'm a really career-driven person and I've been so insanely busy with projects and this and that. However, I just received my promotion. So last week, I have been celebrating my promotion. And for those of you guys who don't know, I actually work for a really large company and I'm in management. So it has been one tough year, I will say that. But, you know, let me know what you guys are most thankful for this year because... I have been so blessed and thankful for this year. It was so stressful, but I got my new car, I got my promotion, and then I was also nominated for an amazing award at work. If I win, I get to bring one guest of my choice to go on an all-expense paid trip to San Francisco, and that will be for four days and three nights at a really swanky hotel. So I am super excited, so hopefully I'll win. I better win, like if for some crazy reason I don't win. Like, it's because of the amount of things I've done. <laughs> so it's just like, come on, man. And then I had testimonials from senior management um, of different departments that I've worked with. And oh, I better win. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this video here. So for this video, we're going to be talking about, um, from my previous video, it's a continuation basically about what is it like now that I am no longer a practicing shaman? Because I have finished the video talking about how a shrine does not make a shaman. It's the shaman who makes the shaman, okay? And we're also going to get into manifestation. So I actually had somebody who contacted me. They were really interested in wanting me to go more in depth about manifestation. So let's get to it. All right. You guys have known, I've mentioned this in so many videos, I'm no longer a practicing shaman. So... <laughs> What was it like, you know, after you stopped from being this teacher, this master teacher shaman, and you had students, and you did this, and you did that for so many years, and then you gave it all up? Like, what was it like? You're pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is <laughs> it's pretty, like, lackluster. It's like, it's like, like it was going to be built up to something amazing. No, it's you're, you're the same. So... <laughs> The only major difference is that I no longer have a shrine. So I still see things. I still like, okay, when I say see things, I'm not talking about seeing ghosts. Okay, I saw that before I became a shaman. So all of the things that I was before I became a shaman, um, maybe we'll start there. So, you know, like you guys have heard from my other videos, you know, I saw ghosts, I talked to them, saw demons, had demon following me, all great stuff. I was good at curses and everything like that. And then I became a shaman. Um, and then I received enlightenment. Uh, so my guides came down because I went and got them all. And they continued to teach me all of the things that I needed to do to be a successful shaman. That means people come to me and I'm going to heal and help them, etc. So with all of that, when I stopped then and I put everything away, I took my shrine down, I have all of my tools and a suitcase and everything that I've carried with me all these years. So, you know, a shrine doesn't make a shaman because even though I don't have a shrine, I can still pretty much do almost everything that I did before. <laughs> Y'all are going to be like, I'm going to contact Tassie now. There are things that I can't do though. So even though, like, so when the shaman has a shrine though, that's when people can actually come and you know, like ask the shaman for services and then they can go what we would call the dong, which means go outside and help those in the outside, like people who aren't directly related to you, like your immediate family. So that is when you really need a shrine. Um, there are technicalities with that when you're in the spirit world. That's why you need it. Okay. So, and all of that is built to protect the shaman. 
So it's basically spiritual barriers that protect the shaman, okay, when they go out. Because you don't know, you know, walk down the street and come across a demon. Like, that could happen if you're going to do services for other people. So that's why I no longer offer services for anybody else. Like, my family, my immediate siblings, you know, they'll come and ask me things. That's perfectly fine. You know, I'll give them an answer and I'll tell them whatever my guides tell me, right? But I don't just offer services like people will throw money at me and I'm like I still can't help you like here's your money back by the way I can't take it <laughs> but it's just like you know people like my close friends they'll sometimes still ask me things like what are you guys telling you because they still talk to me you guys and I will say that when I first quit that I did feel like a weight lifted off my shoulders and I think it's it was more so the pressure and everything about being a shaman that was on me so that when I was done I felt like I could be free now I could run around and be crazy right so I did that for a long time you guys and I, I was pushing it away you know like yeah you know, I was pretending to be normal like your everyday Joe and I was gonna be totally great so you know I did a video on this a while back too about like you know like what happened with me and everything like that after I quit and so it was just really I I received a different type of enlightenment a different type of freedom I didn't have before so I, I felt like I was chained to this for so many years you know there were so many rules there were so many things you couldn't do and now that I'm no longer tied to that like a contract or something I have this freedom, you know, I can make jokes easily and I don't get punished like I used to. So a big difference, it is like, um, I've mentioned when a shaman is going to go to like, uh, they're going to travel, go somewhere really far, or they're going to go to a funeral home or like in my case, if I ever go near a body of water, I used to have to light up incense sticks at my shrine and I would have to tell my guides, hey, this is where I'm going because they have to prepare and protect me. Now, usually people will get a dream uh, before the actual event and you'll either have a good dream or a bad dream. And if it's a bad dream, it means something bad's gonna actually happen to you. So you do need to actually onning, which means go into the spirit world and take care of it. However, if you dream of it and you're already going, when you come back, you have to take care of it. So <laughs> anyways, um, now I no longer have a shrine to do that to. So I don't just burn incense sticks anywhere. I just tell my guides, they, I'm, we're going, whether you like it or not, we're going. <laughs> so then they will actually protect me in turn. So that's a big difference. Same thing with the punishments. So, um, <clears throat> some people's guides will be very uh i don't know they're telling me i'm just naughty okay <laughs> they're they're it's very clear they're saying that's up which means you're naughty <laughs> they're saying i'm really naughty so they always have to protect me <laughs> okay i get it this isn't a time to just yell at me you guys um what i was saying was that some people's guides not only do they yell at you they will also put you into physical pain. So if you don't listen to them, like your leg will just go out like that. Like you are just sitting and then you stood up and you'll go down. Like they did that to me earlier. I actually tripped and fell at work. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was because of something else because they kept telling me something was going to happen. And I was like, just like, you know, like whatever, just breezing past all this information. Right. And then as I was heading to this place, I tripped and fell. Like, this isn't, like, a pretty, like, kind of stumble. No, I went down. My laptop bag, my huge purse with all my desk stuff, because I'm moving desks, it all went down with me, okay? Like, I was wearing heels, too. Okay, I'm going to move on. Now, for other people, their guides aren't as talkative to them, so they'll just go into physical pain, and they won't know why. They just have to kind of figure it out. It's really kind of unfair, but they have to, like, go into the spirit world and try to fix whatever it is, but their guides won't tell them what it is. So, you know, every shaman is different, and how they communicate with their guides is very different, too. So, in a nutshell, you know, like, what I'm always telling people, though, is, like, me, even without a shrine, you know, it's, like, the knowledge doesn't go away. Your abilities don't just go away. You still have it. So don't get too hung up on needing a super magnificent shiny shrine. 
it, you, it's basically you make do with what you can. And I get it. Some people will keep getting visions like they want this and they want that. And, the, you know, like, you know, consult with your teacher. And you know, I've talked about this, too, before. A lot of sh a lot of people won't go to a shaman who did not have a teacher. And, you know, it's it is what it is. I know a lot of people have arguments about this because it's so hard to just get a teacher and it's so hard to get support. But the reason why they are there, they were put in place to protect the individual because what happens is a lot of people will go crazy and they don't know that they've gone crazy because there's nobody there to protect them. So, I mean, who are you going to listen to? A spirit in your head who keeps telling you you're not crazy or all of these loved ones who are trying to tell you you're, you've gone crazy. Like, you know, so it's, I've known people who actually went through this though and they became possessed and everything. So it's just, um, that's a really hard place for people. It's really hard to break through. And we're just going to move on because that's like a totally different subject. <laughs> okay. And I just remember my whole th train of thought there. So the reason why I was talking about consult with your teacher, because normally your teacher will detect when you're going crazy. Same thing with, um, and that applies to people who keep wanting a lot of things in their shrine. Like they will tell you no, you know, cause then you have to listen to your teacher. You have to listen to them until you are done with them as a student. And now you're a master shaman all on your own. You have students and everything. Then you can do it whatever you want. Okay. But then the only thing is, um, you know, that's why it's because it's meant to keep you sane because when a shaman first starts off, they will have these other guides around them who aren't necessarily great for the shaman. They're not bad. Okay. I feel like I'm repeating myself from other videos. You guys can go check those out. Spirit guides are not bad, but they, um, may sometimes be very... You know, like the really bratty. You know, that's what it is. They'll be really bat bratty and they'll try to demand their weight, but they're not really strong spirit guides who are meant to really progress you in a certain way. They're good for their own reasons, just not, you know. <laughs> a last quick note about the bratty ones. The bratty ones tend to tell you a lot of truths and lies with mixed in. Um, they will mix up a lot of that. So if you're a shaman and you're realizing that they keep lying to you because they keep saying yes, 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 but really that's not really the case. It's because you have the bratty ones with you that you actually need a molly, which means to get rid of. Um, just because you would want more of the stronger ones because you're basically cleaning house and, and preparing for stronger and better and bigger ones coming for you. I take back the better word, but it's just... Um, that's typically what I would recommend for my students if they keep getting conflicting answers where sometimes you'll hear yes and then you'll hear no and then you'll hear no again and then yes and then no again. So it's like then you're sitting there like which one's the answer? So that's what I mean because um, a lot of times the answers should be clear and it should come out of you where you know it. It's just this whole sensual thing that just takes over you. So you should know the answer. It shouldn't always just be yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Um, I understand if you just don't know the answer, just don't give an answer. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk more about manifestation. So, um, I was, I got this question because the individual was wondering is manifestations like affirmations. And for those of you guys who don't know, affirmations is basically positive words you tell yourself. Um, in psychology, they use this a lot, especially to try and turn your life around to be positive, you know, optimistic versus pessimistic and the glass half full, half, you know, whatever. So that's affirmations. And the individual's wondering, and I think they were kind of leaning towards they're afraid of manifestation because they think that it could be evil or you could manifest evil things with it. And then they were also afraid kind of like about affirmations in case that was kind of like a spell. So we will dive into this. And just so you guys know, manifestation, let's start with that. So manifestation, you need will and intent, which in a nutshell is power for something to work. What is scary about manifestation though, is that people don't always know when they're doing it, especially if they don't know how to do it. So, because, okay, it's not the same as you're thinking. You're sitting here thinking like, oh, I really want to be lucky today. Like that's 
along the lines of affirmations. You know, people will be like, I'm really lucky today. Like, they'll just keep saying that, right? But in affirmations, the teaching for that, they do recommend that you actually believe in it, though. It's not just words you keep saying. But some people believe just by saying the word all the time, kind of like, God bless you. You know, it's, it's a word unless you put intent behind it. Then can you actually manifest something into a spell? Did any of that make sense? So <laughs> you need to have the ability. Um, okay, let's also talk about like luck, like a spell, right? So how I always talk about, and I think this is where some of the confusion is coming from and some of the mishaps. When I talk about shamans and they do their chants and I say it's a spell, a spell in itself won't work. If you just know the words, it doesn't work unless you n understand the technicality behind everything. Some spells require things. Some spells require power to make it come alive. So that is the huge difference here. Like if you're talking like witch and shaman, witches will tend to use spells in a, in a more traditional, what you guys are thinking about. Like you may need certain oils, certain candle, colored candles, okay? So you you will need like things to make the spell work. Sometimes you're burning stuff, okay? And with shamans, they do do certain things along those lines. However, a lot of that is manifestation and they have their guides giving them the incantations and the power when they're in the spirit world to, to achieve it. So it's different. Um, and I'm trying to think if I covered everything. <laughs> so, so, you know, again, all of this is very dangerous though. I'm not even going to lie. Like it, it can be very dangerous because like, for example, when I was younger, I didn't know I was so good at curses. So I kept like, whenever I got angry, it would manifest into something to take care of why I was angry. So I didn't know what I was doing though. It, it, it always happened when I was angry because when I was angry, like it just came alive <laughs> and it just, whatever it was, this is before Michael as well. And this is also after Michael. <clears throat> so, um, with, with Michael, he would do exactly what I said though, <laughs> like crazy things. He would do exactly how I said it literally. Okay. So that was different. Uh, what with curses though, it actually will come in a different form and it'll strike the person very differently. So that's the huge difference here. If you are saying crazy things out loud and it actually happens exactly as you say it, you may want to consider if you have a demon with you. <laughs> and Michael is crazy. Anyways. So, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard. To, the only thing I can, I'm like, it's kind of hard to explain it, but the only way I can explain it is that it's a feeling that comes over you and it like embodies every inch of you. Oh, this power and this thing I'm talking about manifestation, and then you will it to life. And so that is the huge difference here. And as far as, you know, is manifestation the same as conjuring up spirits? You know, it's again, it, it, it depends if the individual knows how to. Uh, certain spirits, like, for example, pulling a god to get your attention. You know, like, you need to be an individual who could actually do that. You know, it's um, uh, kind of like when people talk to God or talk to Jesus. Like, we'll talk about Christianity because it might be easier to for people to understand it. So, it's same thing with that. It is about will and an intent, and you have to manifest it. So, and a lot of people, they they genuinely believe they don't need to be in a church. They can be anywhere. And technically that is true. You can be anywhere and you can talk to God. You can talk to Jesus. But again, that requires manifestation of a spirit, you know? So I understand some people believe that you can be anywhere and they can hear you regardless, you know, and you know, it is what it is. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, and as far as like unwanted things and negativity, it definitely can happen. And that is why it's all I said was it's scary <laughs> because like, let's say you're pulling luck to you, which as a tip is something you can do. So if you're pulling luck to you, some people don't know when to stop. Not as in you're going to be super lucky. Okay. 
it means something bad's going to happen. So you need to know, like, it's, think of it as like karma and what you give to the world, etc. kind of stuff. Okay. It just sounds really cheesy. That's why I don't really want to say it, but think of it in that sense. Okay. Cause you need to know when that line is done. So you need to cut it off and then you need to quit manifesting it because if you keep doing it, keep pulling, keep pulling, you're going to get bad energies that's going to come to you. So, you know, in a sense, it's kind of like karma. However, it's manifestation. It's not in the sense of you ask for good, you're also going to get one bad. It's not like that. It's not like an even tug. It is uh, like everybody runs through bad luck every now and then, you know, it happens. Like I need air in my tires. Like it's because the weather went down <laughs> in degrees. So I need to put more air in my tires. So it's just, you know, like things like that happen to everybody. However, a lot of people who are very, very aware of themselves spiritually, like I rarely think of myself spiritually. <laughs> um, and I think it, a lot of it is because I'm so in the now and I'm so, you know, realistic versus focusing on how is my spirit feeling today? It's just, I'm really no nonsensical. So that's not the kind of person that I am. Same thing how I've mentioned to you guys, like I don't do spiritual services for myself. However, I did have a really strong vision of me doing a hoopla for myself at the front door of my boyfriend's house my house. I live here now. But anyways, um, so I think I do have to do a hoopla soon because they're bugging me about that. And you don't always need like things like, uh, like you would for like a spell to manifest something. You could literally sit there in your room and try and manifest something. I don't recommend it because if you don't really know how to focus correctly and how to grab the right thing, you're going to manifest something else. And I keep saying grab because that's how I see it as when I manifest something. It's, um, I'm pulling it from somewhere in the universe to give it life. So, uh, I do cheat a lot. I will admit, uh, okay. It's not cheating. They're saying it's not cheating. It is my given right. It's, <laughs> So one of the perks of having being the god of dragons is that you have a lot of dragons <laughs> and you can use a dragon for anything. <laughs> like that maybe just sounded weird. Like there are gazillion, gazillion baby dragons that are born. And you can choose one to do something for you. So it's a little different in that aspect. Um, but, and that's why I keep saying I grab, you know, like I'm grabbing something. Like, uh, I don't do it often though. That was what I was going at. <laughs> so again, I don't do these kind of things often. It's uh, very seldom that I would actually do them. And remember you guys, how I told you guys that uh, the angel of death came? He came looking for a dragon for those type of reasons. So I didn't really tell you guys like what our deal was. And I'm not going to tell you the exact details of our deal. But he came to me because he wanted a dragon for a certain reason. I can't tell you what it's for though. But I know what it's for. I just can't tell you. So and to get one, he had to find me and ask me for one. So that is what I mean about um, some people have the ability to just know it. But when I first was born. I didn't know what manifestation was. I didn't know what I was doing. So that is kind of to give you guys an idea of that. Now, I do want to warn you guys. I feel like I had to put like all these like precautionary things and warnings because sometimes people might get the wrong idea and they might just do things. Um, you do not want to grab one of your own spare guides. Lord, do not grab one of your own spare guides to manifest something. I'll tell you that. That will actually go against the laws of the heavens. Do not do that. Um, your guides were, you are given these guides not to be abusing them. And that would be abuse. Uh, you're, you, it's, it's different unless like the heavens said these guides are meant for this. You can't just be like, well, I'm going to change them up and give it surgery. <laughs> you can't do that, you guys. So <laughs> that just really scared me. Um, you'll get into a lot of trouble if you guys ever do that. Now, um, you cannot just take another spirit that you find out there either to manifest it into something. 
<laughs> so don't don't do that either. So in my scenario, it's very very unique only because of certain things, and and that's it. Um, good things happen to the dragon that I end up choosing though. So it's it's kind of like it's a full circle. It's constantly a full circle, but. Again, I don't do these things often only because, you know, it's it, for shamans, what you guys may or may not know, um, there are certain duties that you do or tasks that will actually which means it's not your guide's energy. It is your own life force kind of energy. So those type of tasks are very, very rare that a shaman would actually do. Do. most of the times shamans will use their own spare guides because um without the shaman there ain't no spare guides i'll tell you that so it's just uh it's it's basically looking at spirits and energy in a different way that you guys may have not been aware of so that's just what i'm saying of uh, using and pulling a dragon Normally, I don't manifest it into a whole lot. Normally, I would give it to somebody in exchange for something else, though, because they are going to manifest it into something because they are allowed to if I'm giving it to them to manifest into something. So that is typically what it is. All right. Um, I think this video has gotten weird enough. <laughs> I feel like we just went like a totally different subject, but that is what I'm trying to speak say when I talk about manifestations and I mention it quite often about the power of manifestation and just be very careful with it you guys because you could conjure up something that you won't know how to handle so that is just all I'm gonna say I'm gonna leave it at that happy Thanksgiving everybody <laughs> and starting next week I'm gonna be doing my new job so we'll see how that goes and hopefully I'll have time to film oh and then after Black Friday shopping I'm gonna post up uh, my next video I'm gonna show what you guys what I bought this year I don't have a whole lot that I'm gonna that I plan on getting this year but I would love to go just for the thrill of it all right you guys uh for a ghostly update very briefly here I was cleaning out Oscar's litter box last night and there was a cat underneath my legs you know Remember how we had, okay, like, pop culture. People tend to talk about if you are, like, if you don't, like, if you look between your legs, like, upside down, you know, like, you're standing up and just bend all the way down and look between your legs, right? They talk about how you can see a ghost, okay? <laughs> so I was literally cleaning Oscar's litter box on the ground, and I felt the cat crawling up by my leg, like, like, rubbing it, like, really hard. So I bent down, and I looked, and there was a cat. <sighs> So I just like, I, I was like literally holding the poo bag and the scooper and I'm just looking at it. I just went right back to digging all more poop. And the cat was telling me that he was thankful I was cleaning out the litter box. But Oscar was literally standing right there watching me clean out his litter box. You know, I've just kind of accepted the dead cat um, that's at my boyfriend's house here. I've just accepted it as part of the family. It is what it is. I'm not going to get rid of it and do anything crazy. So... I'm just going to deal with it. All right, you guys. Until next time.